namaste to everyone so yesterday there were a few questions left so we'll take the final round of the questions today my question was like when you said like about manifestation you said okay we should not manifest i mean we should manifest in the right way we should not manifest materialistic thing i understand that from my point of view because i am into meditation and everything but for the kids how can we tell them um don't manifest i mean like i my language has changed now i started saying oh visualize because my son wants to get into um soccer i mean he he his dreams are really big now do i tell him don't manifest i don't use the word manifest right now uh since 21 days <laughs> i started using visualize but don't you think visualize and manifestation is the same thing i mean when he's visualizing himself playing somewhere in a big team in uh, europe that means it he's manifesting am i right i mean i don't know how to yes you have the right understanding uh, manifestation in the right way see everything has to be right okay this is buddha's teaching right intentions right views this is dhamma pada dhamma means dharma the right thing righteousness jesus christ spoke about the righteousness buddha spoke about the righteousness the hindu dharma is hindu is all, hinduism is all about dharma everything has to be right so your understanding is correct especially when you are asking for the kids visualization you see visualization is a beautiful technique like if you want to create something you want to achieve something for yourself in life then you have to visualize the fine details you have to visualize so then that helps in the process of achieving whatever you want so for your kids they want to achieve something in life and it is perfect to visualize it and in fact they have to use the visualization technique then only they they can become great in any field that is perfectly fine see i want to be a teacher so okay then if there is a big gathering i visualize that i am doing well that is right so the confusion where it comes is the word manifestation some people say yes you have to manifest you can manifest and some say like me be careful so that's where the confusion comes precisely to the point i was explaining about to be careful in the process of manifestation when you are using the sankalpa shakti be careful because the greed takes over now especially when you are in the path of meditation we all do lot of meditation so we will naturally have lot of energy and that is a very precious energy and that precious energy should be utilized in the right way in the proper way for our own benefit so my intention to say be careful with your manifestation is don't waste energy use it for your self realization because the people who have gathered in this zoom session the agenda is realization their agenda is self realization self transformation that is their agenda so when you are having that kind of an agenda in life where you want enlightenment self realization self transformation where you want a better version of your own self every day you want to constantly grow if that is the agenda then you have to use conserve all the energies and use it only for that purpose but for a non meditator the agenda is different so they can use the energy there but once you become a, once you are a meditator then you have a responsibility also to stick on to the, the right things the right views but normally sometimes not normally sometimes what happens the people they come into the path of meditation with right intentions but after they come here then the greed takes over oh i want to manifest a 20 billion dollar company i want to manifest a 100 billion dollar company and once they manifest that oh i want to manifest a 200 billion dollar company and once they said, oh i want to manifest a 500 billion dollar company so they were never satisfied with what they have this is greed krishna yeah. and that leads to suffering you got my point you got the agenda where where i'm coming from yes it's I a very understand. fine it's a very very fine line yes so that's why i said we have to be very clear 
you have to be very clear what we want in our life okay if you come into the path of spirituality if you come into meditation and if your your very reason you come into meditation is for enlightenment then you should always stick on to that you should have crystal clear clarity this is my agenda of my life this is the goal of my life this is what i want in my life so i better focus on that i don't want to waste my energies in other uh, mundane things knowing that desires can never be satisfied yes. because the desire keeps on going that is the very nature of the desire yeah true okay so now you got the idea so yeah. i'm not against manifestation i'm not against <laughs> visualization it's all beautiful techniques but you have to use it in the right place the right time so topic itself i have another question in my meditations i see myself like sitting and there's so many people sitting in front of me and i'm like doing the meditation like i'm so now this fear like oh my god am i manifesting i'm not ready am i doing that consciously and so many times this has happened and so many times i say i'm not ready and i i also get this feeling am i doing it consciously or is it just popping up from my subconscious level because of course that is also one of my i always felt like i would love to do like how you are i would love to do a uh, be a spiritual teacher the it's been always there but you know responsibilities are not allowing that so am i doing it consciously no first of all this language conscious subconscious all those are confusing complicated languages just simple follow your feeling follow your heart okay so your i'm not is, doing your your heart is your gps your heart is your guide okay follow you the feelings in your heart space okay forget about conscious subconscious okay that's all the subject of the mind we speak the subject of heart okay what thank you feel you. like doing you do it that's it thank you thank you namaste sadhi namaste after hearing the topic of dharma in this season 2 and all how we're sharing over the past 20 days i thought i want to share my spiritual journey of my body mind and soul actually i have searched for medical diagnosis since uh, 2004 Whereby I have 24/7 whole bodily pain, and coupled with a lot of weird symptoms due to my overly um, sensitive body, I would say. So in 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 2019, I actually find my medical diagnosis from overseas. We say that I have fibromyalgia syndrome, but I have no relief after hearing the medical diagnosis because the doctor told me fibromyalgia syndrome has no cure. and the cause is unknown and at that point of time i actually have to stop work altogether because i could not bring my body to work but in the same year which is 2019 leon and i met pradeep and nathni for the first time and they say that is a turning point for our life um from taking pradeep first advice on uh, listen to my inner child to the second advice on switching to vegetarian diet i'm so much happier now with no intake of garlic eggs nor dairy um although i can't earn much now but i'm so happy in comparison from before from meditating at 20 minutes i can now meditate up to 90 minutes and i'm slowly pacing myself up to 100 minutes despite the pain is still there um i thank so much from the bottom of my heart to pradeep and nathni for all the selfless wisdom sharing and guidance that really opened up my awareness and realization that there is a need to work towards my transformation and alignment of my body mind and soul i have more clarity now especially after integrating um pradeep's very inspiring team making our home our ashram it has tremendously changed my daily life by letting go my wrong perception of pain and suffering i know it is the spiritual diagnosis that actually brings joy to me i mean they my own doctor my own therapist my own healer self healing at my own pace 
at no cost. And I know the solution is what Pradeep has always said, the five key steps, three M's, two S. Meditation, mindfulness, mauna, spiritual book, spiritual sharing. Thank you so much to everyone for listening to me. And I do have a question for Pradeep. Are diseases hereditary? Or for instance, sometimes we do see some few family members of the same line of descent. They probably like pass away due to similar illness or diseases like cancer. So are these actually soul contracts and pre-birth planning or indeed hereditary via DNA through baby formation in the mother's womb? That's my question. Okay. Thanks for your beautiful sharing. And it's an amazing journey. We've been seeing you have gone through since last three, four years, ever since uh, we visited Malaysia. We saw you in Malaysia. Beautiful transformation. Thanks for sharing. So for your question, the illness, all illnesses are karmic. When I say karmic, that means it is part of the soul design. It's part of the soul planning to learn certain lessons to repay certain karma, to settle the accounts, karmic accounts. And the soul chooses that kind of a family because of its own karma. So the simple understanding is all your illness is your own karma. Okay. So it might appear as hereditary, but why did the soul choose that family? It's because of its own individual karma. I mean, I want to express deep gratitude to you for this wonderful, wonderful self-transformation session. Uh, it was it was a beautiful journey. I mean, it was really beautiful. A lot of clarity, a lot of clarity, crystal clarity in all the concepts. So the mindfulness and everything, everything, it has made a lot of change. I feel more happier and clarity which path to follow. It was very clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I have a question regarding free will. Uh, uh, we already have a soul plan. So can you give me with an example, like free with free will, where, how we can uh, choose, like what's right, that free will term uh, that I'm not understanding it. Everybody has a free will. Every person has a free will. That is a gift they always have. But the people who are non-meditators, their awareness is very less. So their life goes by default. They follow the path of destiny. They don't take charge of their life, non-meditators, because their awareness level is very low. But for people who are into meditation, their awareness level is high. So only meditators know that they have a free will. Non-meditators, they don't even know they have a free will in the first place. And you're asking for an example of free will. You see, you are go we all go through challenges in life. And due to the lack of awareness, we keep repeating the same mistake again and again. Suppose you do more and more meditation and practice more and more silence and practice mindfulness, your awareness becomes more. Then your ability to see the bigger picture, your ability to connect the dots and see why you are going through certain emotions, why you are attracting certain instants in your life, why you are attracting certain people who have a certain traits. So you understand all those things. You can able to see it. Then your free will kicks in. So since you have identified, since your awareness has reason, then your free will kicks in. Okay, what should I do it? How should I handle the situation? Then the free will kicks in. Okay, so meditation is fundamentally important. If you ask specifically, give me an example. Okay, we'll take the example of relationships. For the people who are non-meditators, in the relationship, they constantly blame on each other, husband, wife. But once they come into the path of meditation, then there is no blame game. They take responsibility. Yes, I have attracted this person in my life. I have attracted it for a reason. So instead of blaming him or her, let me figure out what is the lesson I can learn from it. So there... In spite of you going challenges in the relationship, you use your free will not to blame the other person, but rather you use the free will to divert all the energies towards what is that you need to learn from it. Okay, so you use your free will. You want to become a vegetarian before you are a meat eater. 
for example, before you were a meat eater. And now, after coming to meditation, you realize it is not right. So you use your free will to become vegetarian. So all the choices you have in life, you consciously do it out of free will. So that clarity is important. Even to use the free will, you need clarity. If you don't have clarity, you cannot use the free will. Again, how much free will you have? That depends on your karmic baggage. Suppose you have a lot of karmic baggage. Your choices are very limited. You don't have unlimited choices. Your ability to use your free will is directly related to your karmic baggage. If you have too much karma, then you have very limited choices. But if your karmic baggage is less, yes, the choices are more. You understood, madam? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Radeef sir. Thank you so much. The more we do meditation, the more we practice mindfulness, the more we are practicing awareness, moment to moment awareness, mauna. And the more we do service, the more we have the capacity to use our free will, the more the choices keeps increasing in life. So my question is regarding energies. You always say that uh, when you are doing mass meditation, like group meditation, uh, our uh, it helps in raising our energy level. Yeah, we get more my, cosmic energy. Uh, my question is, uh, supposing I am at a low energy level, someone mm -hmm. else is at a higher energy level. So the energy is to be balanced. Am I receiving the energies from the other person also? And his will deplete and mine will increase. I don't know. I don't understand that. So suppose you are sitting in a group and meditating. And if the group is having, the group should consist of senior meditators and newcomers of meditation also. If that is the group you are meditating. So whatever the cosmic energy the senior meditator receives, so that will be the same energy everybody will have access to. So it is not that you are getting energy from another person. You are getting the energy from the cosmos, from the Srishti, from the creation. So, But whatever the energy the senior meditator is receiving, senior meditator naturally he receives more cosmic energy because he has a lot of practice of meditation. His thoughts are very less. So he absorbs a lot of cosmic energy. So that will be the same energy. It will be available to the group. So when you are sitting in a group and meditating, you are not taking another other individual's energy. You are making yourself available to the fl flow of cosmic energy. So there, in that group, there will be a lot of flow of cosmic energy. So you receive it from the cosmos. You are not getting from the individual, but you are receiving it from the cosmos. Yes. That's why it is important whenever you are sitting in a group meditation, the group should always consist of senior meditators. Then you will get the benefit. So I have one more question. Yeah. Um, Yes, we, do mudras, like, uh, we do mudras like we do mudras, hasta mudra. So um, our fingers are straight. I mean, uh, sama fold, sama straight, something like that. And uh, when they are straight, does the energy flow out? Because we are sitting uh, for meditation, we sit with uh, hands locked, and even the legs crossed. So, but uh, if we are doing mudra, does our energy? Leak from the points. Yes, during meditation, see mudras again is a different. Uh, it's a different department in the spiritual science. Okay, so different mudras have different. Um, actually, the mudras are used to communicate for communication. The gurus used to communicate because the gurus used to be in silence most of the time. So through certain mudras, the gurus communicate to disciples. That's one thing. And also certain mudras activates certain energy points. So that's also used for that. So that's a very deeper subject. But for your question, during meditation, your finger lock, so your finger should be clasped like this. Then there is a body bioenergy circuit. If you keep any mudras, like this is chin mudra. You know, if you keep any mudras in meditation, there will be some energy leakage through the fingers. So the very purpose of mudras are different. But for meditation, always you should clasp your fingers. If you want, you do an experiment. Sit for one hour meditation with fingers locked. And sit for one hour meditation with some mudra. 
then you will notice in which method you feel more energetic how will you feel more energetic you will feel more fresh okay the feeling of freshness is the energy the more energy you get the more fresh you feel the more vibrant you feel you can do this experiment and you figure out only in the lock posture you will have the maximum energy from where do we receive the energies from sahasra or agnya chakra or it is like uh, we have pores in our body we receive through all the pores it's I through mean, the, the energy understand. enters your body through the brahmarat we okay. have a we have a portal here on top of the head okay some it's sahasra area it's called brahmarantra yes. so through that the energy flows through the energy body okay man okay, i don't feel the energy so i was worried whether uh, whether i'm doing something wrong or you you don't feel energy actually that's why i said you don't feel energy you feel fresh you feel very active you feel vibrant that means you have energy if you don't have energy you feel tired you feel depleted you feel stressed yes. but if you are feeling fresh energetic happy if you are happy in your life that means you have more energy if you are not happy in life that means you have very less energy if you are healthy that means you have more energy if you are not healthy that means you have very less energy okay so you don't feel energy it is like this you know you cannot see electricity but when the light glows when the fan is running you know there is electricity yes uh, like that okay man thank you just wanted to know one thing a small small details i am getting into my life now being in silence and everything so i have one uh, need a clarity you told you get the guidance from your higher self and you also told that uh, don't have any expectation while doing the meditation uh, yes. so how how can i approach the higher self uh, with so that's my question when you drop the very idea to approach the higher self you will approach the higher self okay so simply means you have to let go of your mind you see we we have a body we have a mind we have an intellect but we are a soul so we are what we are is our self true self you know if you read the book thinking and destiny they would have explained in detail about the triune self like the self is a self contained unit what we call it as atma one portion of it a small portion of it comes to the earth and incarnates the major portion of the soul stays in the causal world okay so when but this the portion which comes to the earth it feels it is separate it feels like oh i'm separate here it feels a separation but the more and more it feels a separation because of the mind because you are connected your environment impacts you your surroundings impacts you so you have a lot of wrong identities okay you think i am this i am that so that ego acts as a barrier to connect to your higher self so when i say the higher self that means the portion of your soul which is still in the causal world that we refer to as over self or higher self the portion which comes into the body is our under self so the more you do meditation the more your mind becomes empty and the more you come out of all the identities and the more you come out of all the identities the more your mind is empty you you understand for the first time that you are never separate it is your ego which makes you feel that you are separate so it is important you let go of the ego letting go of the ego means letting go of all the identities so the more you do meditation the more naturally your thoughts reduces the more your thoughts are reduced the more your awareness is on the self so that means you become very sensitive to your feelings in the heart space so your feelings are your guidance from your higher self so some people they get confused how do i know whether it is my feeling or whether it is my mind so that is why it is important to do meditation because the more you do meditation the more your thoughts are lesser the more you become sensitive to your feelings so for your question your feelings are your communication from your higher self so do more meditation you will get more clarity from the higher self and if you are having expectations the expectations comes from the mind the very expectation stops you from emptying the mind 
yeah i got it and the second one is uh, uh i get confused uh, with words how to ask the questions like during the zoom meetings and all i have a lot of questions but i don't get the right words yeah i'm more of a feeling person so i don't get like right words how to yes. approach so you should write down the question first you should write down the question and frame it in a proper sentence take your time so write down the question and then you ask the question before attending this program i have a very confusing state or uh, all are confusing state after this program i get I, i clear all doubts now i am very happy and also now my challenging is whatever i learned from this workshop i need to practice from to, actually from november onwards i am doing meditation one hour meditation only but now i am doing practice so if i increase my meditation then only i can practice i realize that so that is very happy sir in from that one i am realizing okay thank wonderful you. thank you so that is a beautiful realization you had that without practice nothing moves forward so it is all about yes you understood theoretically but it is the practice which makes the difference if you want real transformation in life you should practice 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 um firstly i would like to convey my immense immense gratitude for all the pearls of wisdom that you have imparted for the last 21 days now my question is that you had mentioned in one of the sessions that consciousness expresses or functions as thoughts if consciousness is is the divine self it is all purity so if it's going to express as thoughts and and function as thoughts then why do we get negative thoughts where does this negative thoughts come your surroundings impact you see the very earth we are in we have incarnated so the thoughts are from the doer right so i said the lower so under self and the higher self so the higher self is pure the whatever the higher self the thinker self and the knower self combinedly we call it as higher self is in the causal worlds it's pure consciousness the purity is always there but once you incarnate to the earth then this is the place of duality we have day and night we have darkness and light we have fear and trust everything is there this is a place of duality so in the place of duality it is like you know from the source from from the source you incarnate as a doer part and then you go through all those experiences you go through this duality and through this duality you learn a lot of lessons and all the lessons you learn here will get deposited back to the higher self so that your consciousness again keeps expanding so that is the very nature of the soul the very nature of the soul is the soul constantly keeps expanding raises its awareness so that it prepares itself for interdimensional travel you know it is like frequent flyer miles the more you accumulate the points the more you have the capacity to fly wherever you want so the more you learn the lessons so the more your consciousness expands so more you have the capacity to go to any dimension you want any any star system okay so that is the very nature of the consciousness so for your question to be very precise why we are going through the negative thoughts because it's our surrounding every child is born pure but it's the surroundings which impact and but that is the game you, the soul perfectly knows that earth is a place of duality the soul perfectly knows there is a lot of negativity but it is the game that how aware you are how evolved you are in spite of all the negatives you remain positive so that is the game of the planet earth you see when there are no challenges then how will you test your how evolved you are it's only through challenges it's only through this negative aspects you yourself reflect wow, okay i've got this awareness so it is like this you know when you are you never experienced sun just imagine you never experienced sun you never experienced the heat will you value the shade of a tree but when you experience hot sun and whenever you find a shade of a tree then you value the tr- tree so we are all divine beings but for us to experience our divinity we come to earth to the place of separation to the place of duality you got it yes thank you so much thank you uh, like you said uh, we attract uh, the situations or people in our life 
and we come here to on the earth to uh, see uh, learn lessons so by uh, changing uh, the way we think or uh, by uh, changing the mode of thinking can we uh, uh, stop attracting such situations or people in our life and will it affect the lessons which uh, we have come to learn okay so we have come to learn lessons and also to celebrate life okay so the more we learn the lessons the more we celebrate meditation is the only way the more you meditate the more you always remain in the miraculous mind so the more you are in the miraculous mind you simultaneously learn lessons and you simultaneously enjoy the life so enjoyment of the life celebrating the life is also the goal of life okay so the more you learn the lessons the more you celebrate life so meditation becomes important so you cannot change the thinking you cannot use your mind to change the mind okay sir right? so you have to take the help of the breath the breath goes beyond the mind so the more you do meditation the more naturally you are in the miraculous mind state so don't focus on negative thinking do more meditation very naturally the negative thinking will go away from your life sir in my uh, spiritual journey of about 30 years i have learned many things but about the dharma i have not had this dharma what is my dharma and uh, in detail you have given very good explanation because uh, nowhere i understood dharma what is my dharma what is uh, sanadana dharma what is uh, uh, other dharmas what we have to do in our life so your explanation is something like uh, five dimensional so i would like to know if there is any book to understand more about the dharma because your explanation is wonderful and it is something unique okay actually i didn't read any books so most of my understanding uh, is either listening to patriji or understanding comes to me in my meditation especially for the topic of dharma i didn't read any books so it is a guidance from within and also listening to patrisar's audios that is what i this, because this topic dharma is uh, very complicated it cannot be written in books but yes if you um, if you read uh, uh, bhagavad gita a lot of uh, things are spoken about this dharma in bhagavad gita krishna spoke about it and uh, in vaisheshikam in vaisheshikam it is also uh, referred to it even in vedas it is referred to it but to understand the zest of it you need lot of meditation but uh, that is why i said it is in five dimensional because it is not in text it is it cannot be in text that is what i understood yes so very simple sir what you see dharma means what to do what not to do right what is my duty so always tune into your heart space what you feel is right you do it that is as simple as that okay sir of late in my spiritual experience in the meditation uh, i am feeling uh, there is no experience but i am feeling that i am conscious always uh, conscious but no bodily con- conscious i don't feel my body conscious but i am conscious continuously for one hour if i do one hour i feel conscious but i can see what is happening around but i am still in deep meditation that is what is my experience is but there is no experience in my uh, uh, meditation no visualization no uh, color or something earlier it was there but nothing is coming now very good you have progressed in the beginning meditators they get lot of experiences but once they become senior meditators once they progress in their spiritual evolution then there will be zero experience no experience they will have practical experiences they will open their fourth eye wisdom eye they know what to do what not to do they will have lot of practical experiences so not to have any spiritual experience but to live in awareness to live in moment to moment awareness 
is a highly enlightened state. My question is, um, I started my journey in meditation sincerely since last six months, and I started with Om meditation. And um, I feel lots of uh, um, improvement in my vibrational um, elevation. Uh, once I have some thoughts, it goes off and I immediately get lifted. Um, recently also I have gone through Mandukya Upanishad and that also gives lots of value to Om Nad, you know, which connects with the cosmic energy. Should I continue with Om Nad, Om meditation or should I? This is... Um, also, music helps me. So, should we take help of this, or is it just my conditioning that I'm feeling this? See, you have to understand the very Om is nothing but sound, it's nothing but vibration, energy. Okay. So, when you chant Om, so there is a lot of vibration, positive vibration radiating around. Any place you go, you want to raise that vibration, you chant Om, the place vibrates into a higher vibration. The place becomes more positive. But meditation is all about, the very goal of meditation is to empty the mind. The very goal of meditation is to empty the mind because the more you empty the mind, more you are connected to the self. When you are chanting Om, you are using your mind. Without using your mind, you cannot chant Om. You cannot chant any mantra. So by using your mind, you cannot empty the mind. So while the Om mantra or any mantra for that reason has its own purpose, has its own uh, benefits. But meditation, the goal of meditation, the purpose of meditation is very simple, is to empty the mind. So no mantra in meditation, no Om in meditation. But when you are not meditating, you can chant Om. But during meditation, no mantra chant. Uh, nowadays, after doing meditation, I am getting deep sleep immediately. So in between the meditation also, I get sleep, I will sleep off. And after some time, I wake up like hour or half an hour like that. What does this mean? It simply means you are going through a self-healing process. The people who are going through a healing process, after intense meditation, they feel like sleeping. So they should sleep. Because the body, the body regenerates. The body goes through the healing process only when the cells are vibrating in very low vibrations. So in our sleep, we heal a lot. So... If you are feeling sleepy after intense meditation, you should immediately sleep because a lot of healing is happening at that time. Thank you. Sir, I have one more question. I have a kid of teenage. How should I make him to bring to the meditation or how I can convince the young generation to come to meditation? They will. The kids will always learn from the parents by observing the parents. So when you go through the self-transformation process, when you become a better version of yourself, when you are happy in your life, then your children want to follow you. The children want to learn from you. So the best way to help them is help yourself. And like I suffered from, I mean, from cancer in 2020 and I, re I just recovered. Then I thought that I suffered because of the kar karma. Like it was, because it was karmic. Then the minute I, I recover, I was just recovering. Then my son, who is 27 years old, he also developed uh, cancer. Then it was a shock. So what is that like? I mean, me also and then my son also. I thought mine was karmic. But back to back, back to back, uh, both of us getting cancer, what could be the reason? I was just, uh, it was bothering me. It is simple. Side. It is simple answer. Everybody, has to, pay, everybody has to pay their karma. And, every, and karma, again, is not a punishment. You know, it is an opportunity to learn the lessons. But like it's that an opportunity to, to settle the really accounts. Now. It doesn't matter whether it is back now. to back. It doesn't matter whether it is back to back or not. I never saw in any family like that, like two, two people immediately getting. I mean, why, one, don't you see the, why don't you see the positive aspect of it? So you have recovered it. And I that recover. motivates your son. So that motivates yeah, yeah. your son to say, yes, I can also yeah. heal it. I can uh, also go through the self-healing process. So okay. you have become an inspiration to your son. Okay. So it is it is only karma, no? Both of us uh, getting. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then uh, I'm a, I'm a veg pure vegetarian by birth. Like I, 
when i used to tell my some non veg non vegetarian friends that uh, you should i mean vegetarianism is good when i was trying to promote vegetarianism they were some of them were telling that even plants have life and they started arguing so what to tell them like they are telling plants also have life so you are plucking have, plants means uh, i have discussed in detail about it in the soul evolution class i have okay, discussed so. about the consciousness the plant consciousness the animal consciousness okay. but the simple answer is the plants they evolve by serving it is the food of love every plant okay. they produce the food not for themselves but for others to consume when you are consuming the fruits from the plant kingdom the tree is very happy but when okay. you kill animals no yeah, animal yeah. is happy to die yeah true true okay sir aapke retreat se mujhe bahut fayda hua hai mentally physically emotionally but uh, self love bhi bahut aaya hai mindfulness bhi bahut aaya hai par confidence abhi bhi kam hai उसके लिए थोड़ा टाइम लगता है मैडम यू कंटिन्यू कंटिन्यू मेडिटेशन यू आर इन द राइट पाथ इट टेक्स टाइम ओके द मोर यू डू मेडिटेशन द मोर यू डू द जर्नलिंग द मोर यू प्रैक्टिस मौना द मोर यू डू सज्जन सांगत्य यू नेचुरली योर कॉन्फिडेंस इंक्रीजेस इट्स अ स्लो एंड स्टडी प्रोसेस यू आर इन द राइट पाथ ओके जस्ट हैव पेशेंस I have a question on Dharma Rakshati Rakshita. Since you were saying like Jesus Christ was following the righteousness path, but why was he still crucified? Like, was it a part of his soul plan, or uh, because it is part of his soul plan? He chose that. He perfectly planned it so that through that incident, the consciousness of the humanity shifts. So many of the times we get offended. Like, if we are in the right path, maybe we will also be going through so much of pain or suffering. Like. No, for Jesus Christ, there is no suffering. There is no suffering for Jesus Christ. He was smiling on the cross. So even when the for the people who are hammering the nail into his hands and feet with a smile, he said, "Oh Lord, please forgive them. They don't know what they are doing." He was not in pain. No enlightened master, of course, he is in physical pain, no doubt about it. But he is not in suffering. No enlightened master suffers because they understand the perfect plan. They understand their dharma. So they execute it happily. Thank you. Is your question you. answered? Yes, master. Thank you so much. Your sessions were very wonderful. Uh, much uh, illuminating sessions. Your radiating face, your smile on face, all thrilling, enjoying, and uh, uh, the entire knowledge that you provided us with, uh, you know, it enthralls me and uh, my wife. We were together in attending the session. So much of knowledge transferred. thank you so much sir small suggestion like uh, uh, of all the 21 days except for one day um, i did uh, yoga after the meditation but on one day uh, i could do uh, since i have to go early in the morning i uh, i did yoga before meditation i feel what of what uh, i feel that yoga if it's done before meditation meditation experience can be improved or better of uh, you'll feel better of in meditation so is it my uh, my experience only or is it a general experience different people have different priorities eh? but it is not a necessity that you have to do yoga before meditation if you feel that way it is good you continue but that is not needed in my life i don't do yoga i never did yoga yes i practiced before meditation i practiced yoga but once meditation came in my life i didn't do yoga because i understood i'm not the body I understood I'm the pure consciousness, so my focus is on my self transformation. So my focus is not on the yoga. Okay, so hatha yoga is for the stability of the body, to improve the immunity of the body, to have a healthy body. Hatha yoga helps, but meditation is for enlightenment. So I am very clear in my goals. Yoga is a beautiful tool to have a healthy system, but don't uh, mix it with like unless you do a yoga, you cannot do meditation. No, that is completely wrong. Understand. yoga is for the body meditation is for the soul meditation is the food for the soul it has nothing to do with yoga but yes hatha yoga has its own benefits hatha yoga is beneficial to have a healthy body to have a good immune system hatha yoga is beneficial but the very purpose of meditation is self realization is enlightenment so those two are separate they both are separate so don't get confused so it is not necessary to do yoga to practice meditation but yoga is a choice yoga has its own benefits but the very goal of meditation is 
enlightenment the first question is about the food you said without garlic yes so i have been practicing this uh, from the from almost 6 months time so but still uh, before i used to do the cooking part but now as i'm coming to the work i'm unable to do the cooking part because i come by 5:30 in the morning master so at the office now they have started cooking for me separately without garlic uh, but now my colleagues are opposing this so this is my what would you suggest for this master quit the job what can i suggest you have to find the alternatives no. where is where yes, there is master. a will there is a way eat yes, fruits master. Okay, take fruits master. eat fruits eat salads in the office you come back oh. home and then you cook okay. on your own hands you cook meditatively you cook mindfully and enjoy the food yes okay master. when you're in office Anything. when you're in office eat fruits eat salads okay okay come home master. and cook your cook the delicious food and eat where there is a will there is a way yeah all right masters it's time to say bye bye until we meet again it's a great joy for me to be with all of you in this 21 days program and the truth is the more i teach the more i learn so i am doing it for my joy and uh, thank you very much for all this uh, amazing days we have spent wonderful time thank you all the participants for making my life more colorful thank you thank you thank you namaste to all of you 